If we're being honest with each other, Asian people love money. We love money. More than anyone. But if you feel broke today, getting rich seems so far away. Can every Asian American person become a crazy rich Asian one day? The answer to that is a resounding yes. In this mini documentary, we'll talk with Sam Fong, founder of Asian Investor Network, on building your net worth, how to save money, and the importance of Asians paying it forward to other Asians so we can all build our wealth together. How do you make your first million dollars? Once a marker of wealth, in modern times, it's not what it used to be, especially if you live in metropolitan cities like Los Angeles or New York City. But once you make your first million, the second million is always much easier. As you attack your network from every angle, you're going to have a lot more opportunities to do so. Like, right. for example, after I first became a millionaire, my right. opportunities kind of skyrocketed. And, you know, at first, you know, like the first hundred thousand was hard. Then the next like 500,000 was also hard. And then, but then like from 500 to a million was a lot easier. And then from a million and higher, it was really easy. It was <laughs> it's really easy compared to everything I'd done. So it accelerates over time. That's why the rich get richer. That's, that's, that's <laughs> exactly. very interesting. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Asian American wealth is growing. Within one generation, we've gone from being poor immigrants to becoming the highest paid demographic in the United States. Yeah, so my parents uh, moved over to Canada uh, before I was born, uh, when they were 18 or so. So they're the typical immigrant story, came here with nothing. Uh, they didn't have enough money to for a return ticket back to, to China and Hong Kong. And so uh, they met while they were in college. And um, at the time, you know, my parents didn't know how to speak English. They had no money. Uh, they had no connections, no family here. And... They just sacrificed a lot and um, made it work. Then they moved over to America before I was born, and I was born here in the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Um, so I would say that we had a pretty middle-class lifestyle. Um, Almost every Asian immigrant story is similar. Your parents came over with no money and no connections, but they had a desire to hustle and make a life for themselves in America. A lot of our parents now are fairly wealthy, this just shows that every Asian American has the same potential. It just depends on you to make it happen. With Asian Americans generating more wealth than ever before, our influence is taking hold in the US. We have an Indian American vice president. The top paid CEO in Silicon Valley is Chinese American. And Asian owned companies like TikTok control the social media space. Not to mention Asian Americans are putting their money behind Asian media more than ever before. Movies like Crazy Rich Asians are making a lot of money at the box office. The popularity of BTS is insane, and labels such as 88 Rising are growing faster than ever. It's super important for every Asian American to understand how to build wealth, so we can continue to grow our influence in the United States. Things like the Ivy League's racist emissions process in previous generations would have been swept under the rug. There's a real issue right now with Asians and university enrollments, particularly in Harvard. They Why? discriminate against Asians. But due to Asian American growing influence, a movement actually mobilized to bring attention to the insane policies within the Ivy League that amounts to legalized racism and racial quotas. Not only that, but nowadays every movie is portraying Asians in a positive light, and diversity has become the name of the game in Hollywood. We want to continue that progress, and the fastest way to do that is with growing our wealth. This podcast is brought to you by HighPage. HighPage is a revolutionary new LinkedIn bio tool that allows you to run your bio link page on your own domain. Besides listing out your links, you can also sell digital products, accept donations, and deliver recurring memberships using HighPage. Think of it as Patreon plus Linktree together and all with zero fees so you can keep all of your hard-earned money. According to Sam Fong, building your net worth has three main elements. Number one, creating multiple income streams. Number two, saving a portion of your primary income. And number three, investing your income and savings in a diversified portfolio containing stocks and real estate. The first thing we wanna go over is creating your multiple income streams. Most people have a job, 
However, in modern times, it's also a good idea to start a side hustle. What everyone likes to do these days, which is start a side hustle, but it has to be something that's worth your time. So I don't consider driving for dollars or like you know anything where you're trading manual labor for for money、uh, like a side hustle. It might help pay the bills, but that's not going to help you long term because you're not growing anything for yourself. Like it doesn't pay you after you stop doing it. One of the best ways to do this is with digital courses. With a service like HiAx.com, you can start creating courses, eBooks, and other digital products and selling them to your audience. This requires you to build a following online, which isn't easy for everyone. But besides digital products, the internet is a gold mine filled with opportunities. Yeah, I think it's important to find something that you can be really passionate about and will make you money. Like you can be passionate about something, but it doesn't doesn't make you money, then it can't be your job. Even if you don't want to do a side hustle and you're stuck at your regular job, there's still a lot of opportunities to make money. One of the biggest ways is to negotiate your salary. Most people are going to be working a job. Like to to be honest, most people aren't going to start their own business and be like wildly successful at it. Most people are going to be working their jobs. And if you want to make more money at your job, then you gotta learn how to negotiate your salary, because that、mm-hmm. one conversation alone is worth thousands of dollars. So. For example, in my course, I cover like pretty briefly、uh, the salary negotiation aspect, and it's not like rocket science. You just have to practice, and you have to know what to do. And if you do it well, like everyone I've、uh, shared this with, like my personal friends and so on, like they're able to make like several grand off of that one conversation alone. And that number balloons over time because you have like a higher base salary. Let's say that you are able to add like five grand to your base salary. So Next year, if they adjust it and they just give you the bare minimum of like three to five percent, it's off of that higher base salary. So that's one way to just make extra money right off the back. Now that you have multiple income streams, you need to save that money so that you can have some initial capital to start investing. Yeah, I actually went all the way to seven thousand five hundred. So that's how much I started with when I first began investing. Seven thousand five hundred. This was like how old were you? Nineteen. Eighteen. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you had seven thousand five hundred eighteen. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's、um, like, yeah. It wasn't bad.、Uh, it was a pretty good start, and、mm-hmm. I went all in right when I turned eighteen. <laughs> yeah. All my life savings in my first、uh, <laughs> stock. And what? What was your first stock? It was called a、uh, Universal Display Corporation. So back then、mm-hmm. it was called.、Uh, it had a ticker P A N L. Nowadays、mm-hmm. it's called O L E D.、Um, and if you look it up.、Uh, Maybe you can do this offline or something. But if you look it up, I bought it at、uh, seven bucks. Okay.、Um, it is now. Let's see here. It is now two hundred and twenty-two. Oh damn!、So、that's like a thirty something <laughs> x. But unfortunately,、yeah. I was too smart for my own good, so I just、mm-hmm. sold it at like a hundred percent, hundred forty percent, and things like that. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. Or I could just. I- Could、That's fine. I mean, you got、items. you had to get the profits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. So, so right now you said you're about a million in the stock market, right?、Yeah. Is that including crypto or not? Uh, no. Uh, so okay.、Stocks. How much are you in crypto?、Yeah. You in crypto, that? that's my more speculative part of my portfolio. I'm generally kind of、um, not super, not a huge risk taker. Like I, I like、right. my investments to. Perform how I think they're going to perform, and、uh, control all the risk there. So I, I'd say maybe like under a hundred grand for crypto. Oh okay, yeah, that's pretty nice. That's pretty. It's、yeah. little little start on crypto. Yeah, because、yeah, you know it's funny because、uh, my dad was big in like stocks, but then his crypto investments just shot up. So、oh, then、nice. his crypto became the most part of his <laughs> stocks. Oh wow, that's really cool.、Um, I got okay, into crypto、cool. game late. Oh, you got in too late. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. And then, so what is your philosophy with investing? Like, I know there's like different people who like they they day trade or they just like buy and hold. Like, what is your like personal philosophy? So my general philosophy is、uh, don't lose money, obviously, <laughs> and also that、um, I want to get the return that I'm looking to get. Like, I don't have to be super greedy, but. If I expect a certain return, I want to do everything that I can to hit that certain return. So, for example, in stocks,、um, I want to hit above ten percent、um, okay. annualized every year. In real estate, 
um, that's that number is like in the mid teens um, in terms so of so like fifteen percent yeah, type thing yeah they say okay. like fifteen percent every year so um, and in crypto I guess it's just anything goes but <laughs> that's why it's like <laughs> it's the like a hundred percent at least <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um, yeah um. Yeah. So, th yeah, that's a good uh, right. That's a good goal. But how do you make sure that that happens? Like that seems like a very hard thing to to do. Yeah. So I have uh, very specific strategies, and I don't really deviate too much beyond that. Like I have right. to understand the investment. I have to know. I have to be able to do my due diligence properly. Uh, you know, like okay. understand all the risk factors, control for the uh, uh, as many outcomes as I can. So mm. there's generally like a a base case, like what you expect to happen in any given right. investment, a upside scenario, like if things perform well, this is what you should get, and a downside scenario. So, for example, if if you know things hit the fan, um, how how are you going to perform and how are you going to get your money back? So, right, right. With stocks and real estate and my different strategies, there's there's something different with each asset class. So, for uh, real estate flips. For example, you want to, it's a short term thing. So you need to uh, be able to get in, get out, and your assumptions have to be correct. So if you assume too little on the renovation budget, then you could get killed on the um, on renovating expenses. Mm. Or if people use hard money and they, they have to hold on to the investment a lot longer than they expect to, then they could get wiped out. So right. it's important to control for those factors. Gotcha. As more and more Asian Americans become wealthy, we're going to pass it on to the next generation. Sam Fong is one of those men. He's created a fund aimed at helping Asian American founders create the next generation of startups. You know, what's what was really interesting about you was the venture fund for Asian American founders. Like, is that still coming through or what's going on with that? Yeah, we are um, setting up the fund right now. We're preparing mm. like fund documents and so on. But pretty soon we're going to start uh, talking with investors who might be interested in participating in this fund. And then right. uh, we already have like the deal flow set up. So uh, we think that we have a lot of compelling and interesting companies uh, that would fit this, uh, this business model. Yep. And is there like a specific niche or is it just all Asian? I would say that we have to target venture scale returns. So we're right. looking for returns in excess of, let's say, 25 to 30%, uh, which okay. means that they have to scale uh, pretty well. So that might be uh, companies in deep tech, in AI, in right. um, the blockchain, fintech, SaaS, and so on. Gotcha, gotcha. No, that's awesome. I'm, I've always wondered why there wasn't like a fund for Asian Asian Americans. Or actually, is this yeah. for Asian Americans or is it for all Asians? Uh, I would say our main focus is on Asian Americans, just because yeah. we're all uh, all the founders of the fund are Asian Americans. Right. Uh, but we're open to exploring more if if it fits you know our comfort level. Right, right. Did you have a website or a place where people can like get more information on that? I think that's like something yeah. a lot of people. Would um, I'll, I'll share that with you after. Yeah. It's it's also called a uh, Analect Ventures. Analect Ventures. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, we'll we'll link out to that. I think that's uh, super super interesting because I think I don't know if you've felt this, but sometimes it feels like the people who are succeeding that are Asian American don't necessarily pay it back to other Asian Americans, and that's like something that I think we need to do better as Asian Americans, like like using our network to help propel other Asian Americans to succeed in like business and other stuff. What do you think? What's I completely thoughts? agree with that. Um, that's yeah. partly why I founded uh, Asian Investors Network in the first place. Right. You know, I noticed the same thing you did that, you know, like we need to do a better job of supporting our own community. You know, um, mm -hmm. a lot of other ethnic groups are really great at this. Uh, but I feel like the Asian American community or possibly even like sometimes Asian groups in general, like we we help out like our family and our immediate circles, but maybe not like the overall community. So I think um, we can do a better job at that. And uh, you know, Asian Investors Network is my platform to help uh, help do that, to help right. investors in the Asian community connect, share ideas and knowledge, ask for advice, and make deals together. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think it goes down to the fact that Asians are kind of competitive with each other. 
So there isn't that um, sense of, hey, I, I, if I help another Asian person, that helps me too. It's like, it's almost like I want to prevent this Asian from succeeding, you know, because it's like, if you think about it, like, did you go to Ivy League? I went to a University of California, which is okay, gotcha. considered kind of Ivy League. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, with, with that, like, let's say Ivy Leagues, right? It's, it's like, there's only so many spots open, especially for Asians. So it's like that competition of, hey, if I get in, like, I have to prevent someone else from getting in. But I don't, I think what that hurts us in the long run. And that's why we need to like have all these networks come into place. Um, like even with South Asians, like, I don't know if you've noticed this, but like South Asians are very, very good at networking and getting their own people in like positions of power. Yeah. So that's like something we need to learn from them. Um, in my I agree. Opinion. I, I, yeah. We can't like, you know, hold each other back. We got to push each other mm -hmm. forward and help leverage our networks because we're so much more powerful as a community, right? right. Our, our whole network becomes more valuable when you contribute to it, when you add value and you're willing to make like introductions or uh, help mentor other people in the community. Yeah. So I, I think there's oh, a yeah, lot 100%. to go around. Yeah, that's why I liked um, everything that you're doing with your investors network. And Thank you. It's, it's definitely very, very important uh, that we do this because we're also a very small, we're the minority of minorities, essentially. So like if we are competitive with each other, then it just makes it so much harder for Asians to succeed, especially in the West. In 2021, Asian Americans are evolving. While a lot of us are still going to fields like medicine, finance, and law, we're not just that anymore. Asian American creators, businessmen, and entertainers are quickly emerging. Our growing wealth will only help our cause, and by uniting with a purpose of Asian American advancement, the future is bright for our next generation. But like, can you pitch five stocks that you really like right now? I like Alibaba. The ticker is BABA, -B -A, and I like it because right now I think that it is unfairly punished for uh, investor concerns. So the time that you make money as an investor is when people are fearful, and that's when you get greedy. Or people mm -hmm. are greedy, and then you get fearful. That's like a Warren Buffett quote. Or I think uh, Rockefeller put it even better. The best time to buy is when blood is running in the streets. Mm. So what that means is you want to be buying when everyone's scared of something. That's how I've gotcha. made the vast majority of my um, profits in stocks. I always buy when people are scared. And the biggest winners for me were last year, March 2020. Uh, I, I went all in on stocks mm -hmm. as well as March 2009. I went all mm -hmm. in at that time too, but I just had a lot less capital. So the reason I like BABA or Alibaba is because everyone's scared of China right now. Everyone is worried about the Chinese government um, taking out tech leaders in Chinese companies left and right. And I think there is some validity to that uh, concern. Like for example, I mean, Bob, Alibaba is not without risk for sure. There's an element of risk there, but I do think that that risk is not that high relative to the reward that it brings. So Alibaba is a very well-run company. It has a lot of uh, profit, it has a lot of uh, strong and growing sectors, and it is uh, poised to grow with the Chinese economy, which it will inevitably take over the American economy by 2027 or so. So mm -hmm. if you want a great company that is solidly managed, has great cash flows and profits, uh, good margins and a bright and growing future. I think that Alibaba is a great bet.